Hey man, everybody, welcome to LIB Wall Star interview session. We be here with uh, Prince Wanton, yes, one sir. of the best artists. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for coming too. Uh, I just want to know, right? For those who don't know you, right? Who is Prince Wanton? Prince Wanton is a creatively free alternative artist from the Western African country of Liberia. Mm -hmm. I was raised there half of my life and uh, the other half over here in the U.S. So I get both worlds you know yeah and that's how i move around my creativity so you being you being from liberia growing up back there getting getting experience a lot of different things how old were you were you there like during the war time or you came after the war yeah i, I was born during war time so yeah. I, I in a way experienced a little bit of that but mm -hmm. i came up i came out in the u.s probably around age 11 so oh, yeah. it's basically, basically been like half of my life here and half there yeah What's this like? Uh, what's the experience like you being from Liberia, being in America? Because it's a whole different culture. The culture back in Liberia is way different from the culture back here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How was it like fitting in with like these American culture and things like that? It definitely took time to get used to. I, I didn't like it at first. Yeah. Honestly, when we got here at first, probably the first couple months, mm -hmm. I cried to go back because I didn't like how the <laughs> environment was and everything. But yeah. over time, I got used to it and I adopted to everything and all that. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now we are just gonna talk music a little bit. Talk about other things like that. Uh, when you, when you first started writing your own music, right? How old was you? I started singing at the age of ten, which <laughs> I was I was forced to be in choir. At first, I, I honestly didn't like yeah. singing and all that. I was mainly focused on music production. Yeah. But I was forced to be in choir. But I didn't write my first song to like age 17 so like mm -hmm. closer to getting out of high school is when yeah. I started being more of a writer you know that so so uh like the kind of music you make and you speaking of being quiet and things like that and uh how will you describe your sound I honestly don't like to put myself in a box when it comes to genres and all that but mm -hmm. uh sound wise I I like to say alternative because mm -hmm. most people don't know what to expect when, when you tell someone the, the music I do yeah. is an alternative type of genre or whatever. Yeah. So, for example, uh, a couple of days ago, I was talking to some girl off TikTok, and she was like, the thing I like about your music is that when I first seen you, I thought, hey, maybe he's a rapper or this, that, or whatever. But yeah. from what I heard, mm -hmm. there's what you would expect to hear. Mm -hmm. I go the opposite route of that. Oh. So I like to say alternative. Uh, I like that. I like that. Uh, so your father being a deacon of a church, right? And your mother being a prayer warrior, yeah. right? And uh, your aunt is a gospel music ambassador back in Liberia. Where? So when you first started singing, right? How did it feel about the kind of music you were putting out? Honestly, from my mom's side, it was more of um, her saying... I should do gospel music because I grew mm -hmm. up basically my whole life in the church yeah. and even playing piano and stuff in the church. <clears throat> that's that's That was her expectation for me. It was mostly gospel music. Mm -hmm. But from my, from my aunt perspective, she, mm -hmm. she was cool with the music, the music I do, even even up to now. She even, she'll send me some stuff that I've posted out and she'll be like, oh my God, you did so great on this one and all that. Yeah. So, and for my pops, he don't, he don't really talk much Sometimes he try to tease me on some stuff here and there. But, <laughs> you know, as they get old and all that, they understand and, and mm -hmm. try to be more supportive of what I do. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, the kind of music you make, right? I think some of you, as you said, like, yeah, my mother, you make gospel music. Yeah. I think I see that part in some of the songs you make, like back in, the old songs you make from the old album. Yeah. Yeah. Called uh, Fall From Love, right? I could feel like they, uh, I could feel like different side of you. Then the music you're making right now, and the of music course. you're making right now is dope. Yeah. But Fall From Love is just something more religious. Because mm -hmm. I see like uh, different energy and different things and different time, and it just shows different things. Of course. So, what position, I mean, what, uh, at that point when you was making the album, right? What mood was you in? Were you in at that time? Honestly, for the most part of it, let's say, damn, I experienced my first heartbreak. I, I, I experienced, you know, love or whatever it is. And mm -hmm. it was just transcribing those emotions into melodies and yeah. putting those into words and just putting them out and, and all that. So most of the songs, they were like when I first started writing music yeah. and trying to write from different perspective. And 
still trying to figure out my artistry and what I want to talk about as an artist. Yeah. And at that moment in my life, it just happened to be girls. You know what I'm saying? Girl fucking with my emotions here and there and shit like that. Yeah. So, yeah, that's where it all came from. Yeah, we know you from a very competitive family. Oh, yeah. yeah. Your, uh, brother, your brother, your, your brother, your brother, Amado. Yeah. Your other brother, yeah. uh, videographer, and he do he do productions too. Yeah. And I, I heard you next to the camera too. Oh, yeah. And uh, King too, he really crazy with the beat. And uh, of course. the other guy too, he handled the management and things like that. But I just want to know how how competitive are you guys when it comes to like making a record? Um, well, when it comes to when it comes to the process or whatever, usually for some reason it's like this with me. If I don't touch a beat, like if I'm not part of the process of making it, it's hard for me to, mm-hmm. in a way, find that marriage where I relate to it and yeah. all that. Because with me, even the writing process, mm-hmm. emotions or that sad feelings is where it mainly is. So when I'm writing, I'll mm-hmm. turn off all the drums and all that yeah. and just listen to the keys or the guitar or whatever it is that's mm-hmm. going on in the record. Mm-hmm. But I would, I would have to put something down and then be like, okay, Nathan, you can, or King, you can come and do the drums and okay. this and that. But mm-hmm. it's like I have to touch every project before I spit on it, basically. Uh, so, uh, for me, um, I really enjoy your music, right? Appreciate it. Yeah. I admire you as a person, the way you carry yourself, right? And uh, I just want to know, like, uh, how did you get in touch with one of the love room because all these kids get me? Because when you say kids get me, you're one of the dopest artists from Edge and SMG. Word, word. How did you get into, how did you get in connect with him to convince him or to talk to him to get on the album, Demo In My Eyes? Yeah. Honestly, I had previously uh, met up with Kizzy. I think it was either 2018 or 2017. Mm-hmm. He, he fucked with whatever I was doing at the, at the moment and all that. But due to some some other situation, we couldn't really get on the record and all that. Yeah. To like later on in 2020 when, uh, when Jack came along and he already had a connection with Kizzy. So yeah. it, was, it was easy to get that. So when we told him, we're like, yo, we've been trying to get a record with Kizzy W. He's like, oh, yeah, that's, that's my little bro. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying make the call and all that. So that's that's how that process worked. All right, all right. So who is Jai Prince to you? Because we see you guys together a lot of time. Yeah. We see how you guys carry yourself, and even sometimes like we're doing all the things. So I'm not gonna reach out to Jai to get to you. Word, so word. I gotta like hit up Jai, and I bother him a lot. He's somebody uh-huh. who I know personally. Yeah. So my cause, my cause never get turned down. But I just wanna know for you, who is Jai Prince to you? For those who don't know, yeah, Jai is my management. You know. That's, yeah. that's management right there. Yeah. I just want to say, man, shout out to Jai Prince, man. So, you're an artist, right? Yeah. That work by yourself majority of the time, so things like that. Boy. You're working with KZW. What was the creative process like? Um, I had previously written or produced the record or whatever and had it sitting for a certain amount of time. Yeah. And I just couldn't get a second verse on it. I mean, I could have just sat down and write a verse or whatever, but... Mm. I wanted a feature on that. Mm-hmm. But he is one of the people that will get back to you like that yeah. uh, when you're working with them. So mm-hmm. we send the record to him, and like a day later, he, he sent it back. Yeah. And I don't know. It's like he understands music and the creation and everything. And the way his verse is on, on the record, mm-hmm. it's like as if he knew exactly what was going on in my head when I was writing every word on, on that record. Mm-hmm. So it, it's it was a very easy easy process, you know. Yeah, I think Kizzy W one of the artists in the library industry, right? I feel like he don't really get the respect he deserves. Definitely, but he read it up there. And other things, I appreciate you being a you being an artist coming, you being an artist in this field. Yeah, and working with him, I think. I listened to the album. I ain't gonna lie to you. A lot of a lot of different times, right? Right. The album was the the record to your heart. I felt like it was hard to tell who was Casey Devi singing and who was Prince Walter singing because I really? felt like it was just blend in together. Yeah. <laughs> so tones and tempo, everything was almost like the same. So yeah. I love the record, man. Appreciate and, uh, it. And so the song, right? What's the meaning of the song? Uh, what's the meaning of the song "Letter to Her" on the album? Uh, Demons in My Eyes. Um, "Letter to Her" is bis- is is basically self-explanatory because. Mm-hmm. Previously, before writing the record, yeah. um, I was going through, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. a little moment 
and I had written out a, a letter. I don't know if you've seen the music video, but yeah. there's this. I'm reading something from the beginning, and yeah. that was what I wrote less than six months before even writing the song. Yeah. And I think we had just got gotten back from vacation uh, from uh, Phoenix. Mm -hmm. It was when, when I sat down, it was, it was during mixing and mastering process and I just, when I picked the guitar up and just started playing the okay. melodies and that's how the way the tour came about. Mm -hmm. okay. So another song that's supposed to be on the demo in my, in my eyes album, right? Yeah. But they didn't make the album called The War. Cause I watched, uh, I watched the listening party, the listening session, which yeah. I already played the song. It's supposed to be like, uh, I think you had like, oh, uh, bunch of different songs but yeah. somebody that didn't make the album but the war was only one that stood up to me mm -hmm. and I really felt like I can relate to it because I'm a person that very that think different on different different things and things like that but I want to know like uh, when you was creating the war right mm -hmm. what was the creative process like and why didn't it make the album honestly I would say when I when I wrote the words uh, I was I was basically in the same mindset that I was when I wrote Summer Love. Because mm -hmm. in a way, this somewhat have like similar storyline mm -hmm. or whatever, but the words is, is it's talking about a whole nother planet and, and mm -hmm. all that. And it's, it's just about a run, runaway love mm -hmm. that is finding a new environment to prosper or to progress in you know, yeah. or, or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I was, it was, I don't know. It all just came naturally. It was it was a chill mindset that I was in, mm -hmm. and I think I wrote about three records yeah. within the same night, and the words happened to be one of them. But they didn't make the album because what we had people do at the listening session was vote mm -hmm. on which record they liked the most. Yeah. So from one to ten, other records got like ten. Yeah. Other records got like what five and all that. And the words just happened to be one of those with the lowest ratings and yeah. all that. So it didn't, it didn't make that it didn't make the album and I actually uh yeah. substitute it for Letter to Her. Because Letter to Her was yeah. supposed to not make the album, but mm -hmm. I kept pressing for it and that's oh. how we took out the words and put in Letter to Her. Are we still gonna get the war back? Uh it's not gonna it's yeah, not yeah, gonna come back to us anymore. No <laughs> definitely you you're gonna have that this year. Okay. okay. Alright. Uh, so this is the silliest question, right? Yeah. You said uh, you had a song about you falling in love with a stripper, a whole lot of things like that, and uh, I just want to know, uh, have you ever fallen in love with a stripper before? Uh, honestly, no. It, for a writer, I think mm -hmm. one of the most, or one of the things we find the hardest is putting ourselves in someone else's shoes yeah. and writing from their perspective. Like most writers would tell you this, that. Mm -hmm. It's something that's hard. We have to find that marriage or that creative marriage or whatever that we're like, okay, I relate to this, mm -hmm. then I can write off of that. Okay. You feel me? But for um, Omari, is the record you're talking about. Yeah. That was mainly me trying to expand more on my creativity and mm -hmm. put out an, a story that is not expected yeah. of someone who is just entering the game, you know? Yeah. And me saying, I fell in love with the hooker. Mm -hmm. it's, it's something you know what I'm saying when when especially in the African community yeah. when my pops heard that shit yeah. he said hold on what <laughs> that shit back. what did you say <laughs> you, you feel me so it's, it's something yeah. it's, in a way it's kind of like a, mm. an attention getter yeah yeah. but nah I, I've actually never been to the strip club one of my goals though <laughs> yeah, well, goes, right. you, me? you know what? I think you got the best manager for that. I think Prince will make you will make you accomplish that goal. And, and, I'm and the goal. <laughs> but yeah, man. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, who's that one Liberian artist that you listen to, but people really don't know you listen to that much? I definitely have to go back to Kizzy because I feel like creative wise, he's he's up there. He's one of the people that I look to as a <laughs> challenge or yeah. in a way. <clears throat> and as an artist, I feel like one thing that I, I personally like is challenges because in a way it better me. Even doing yeah. the, doing the record with him, I, that's one that's one thing that, that was going on in my head. I was like, okay, there's yeah. a possibility this nigga could murder me on my own record or whatever. But mm -hmm. I'm down for that challenge because in a way I learned from it and it yeah. better me as an artist. It better my art and all that. Because mm -hmm. I don't know, I feel like he's just that one artist that I go back to. Yeah. To his music as a reference track and to learn new things. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh 
What tribe are you? And uh, do you speak any traditional Lapeer language? I I do not speak any traditional languages. Mm-hmm. However, I still got my colloquial my mouth, so you try me out, cause you. You know what I mean? It may be sense. Yeah, me. Yeah, but now nah, uh, I'm, I'm 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 straight from the Nemba Mountain. You feel me? Oh yeah. You think about the Nemba Mountain? Yeah, I'm 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 definitely from the Nemba Mountain. You know? Yeah. So I I'm 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 Gil to be specific. Yeah. yeah. I think you're the first Gil song I know. No what? disrespect to all of the Gil artists and things like that. I think me just know you personally. I think yeah. you're the only Gil artist I know, other than Bucky Raw, because he uh he really rapped that shit work, work, work. in his songs. But uh, what we're gonna do to what we're gonna talk about for me, I'm a I'm a proud Basa man, right? I can I'm gonna tell you that straight up. <laughs> the fufu pie is dead, but my own favorite dish, right? Mm-hmm. Is tabagi. Mm. It's not just about it's not just about how it tastes or anything like that. I just feel like the thing about tobogi is like just different. Mm-hmm. It's just it come with a lot of different things. It come with diarrhea, it come with a whole lot of different things. If you know you eat tobogi, right? Wait, 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 but I just wanna know what's your favorite Liberian <coughs> dish and why? Damn. It, it would definitely have to be uh the Liberian jollof. Because I feel like mm-hmm. even in the the whole of Africa, you feel me? Yeah. Like, bro, make this shit the best. You gotta I'm, talk that shit harder, man. Like, bro, make this shit the best. I don't talk know, that I don't shit know, harder, man. I don't know if I jump on <laughs> my grandma and pour elbow in that pot, my man. Yeah. Hell nah, but nah, definitely the, the jello yeah, rice. Man. It gotta be. Yeah, man, favorite. for uh, for like the jello. I saw the jello competition too. Speaking of the jello, yeah, I saw yeah, the jello yeah. competition and like, bro, one couple of times. Hey, but yeah. uh, what we're gonna talk about, right, in terms of upcoming work and things like that, right? Mm-hmm. What are you working on right now? Uh, right now, actually, this Friday, I don't, I don't know when this will be out, but yeah. fr- Friday I got a, I got a, I got a new single dropping. It's called yeah. Lio Love Is Overrated, and that's that's even why I'm wearing this right now because yeah. for the cover I got this one. You feel me? Yeah. So it's all in promotion for that record. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got I got a new record dropping, and then after that, we're we're planning on releasing an EP. So. Yeah, man. Get ready for that. Definitely. Well, shout out to you, man. I really like the last album. I ain't gonna lie to you. Yeah. The last two albums you dropped, I really like both of them. Demons in my eyes. Yeah. And the other album you dropped before Demons in my eyes. Far from love. Far from, yeah, far from love. Right. I think that's one of the album that I always go back to when I'm trying. When I'm trying to get a Prince one to work. Prince right. one to work. <laughs> I go back to that, and I feel like, cause your songs just give people different vibe, different energy, different Definitely. things like that. And uh, sure, I just want to appreciate you for coming. I I appreciate your time and everything. <laughs> yeah, man. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know right now the music out, everything, but where can they find you on all DJ platforms? Including the social platform, too. Yeah, on everything, you can find me at Prince Wanton. <laughs> on social media or streaming platform, is all at Prince Wanton. Make sure you go check out the new records that are coming out. You feel me? It's yeah. all... Genuine emotion is being transcribed, especially with the one that that dropped uh, a couple weeks ago, Bendy. You feel me? If yeah. if you're into that booty shaking shit, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? That record is perfect. For so you see, you see about you see about this strip club in there? Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? I make that happen, man. Tell your mom to tell her mom to tell her mom <laughs> to come out and shake some ass. You feel me? You know so what? Whatever we're doing next, it's gonna be right. I'm gonna get you a stripper in here. Yeah, man. Nah, nah, nah. That's the real talk. I'm gonna get you a stripper here, but thanks for coming, man. I really appreciate the time, man. I appreciate you. Thank you so much, Prince. You know what it is? Like I'm not fuck the heat of here. Bob boy, I owe you the man. I think I wanna have one of you. That we're gonna go back. Action. All right. If you're ready, you can let me know when you're ready. Not ready. Rolling. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you ready? Or you ready? <laughs> In action. I remember Prince One Ten. We hear the music. We hear a lot of different things, right? Yeah. But how will you best describe your music for yourself? To yourself. Uh, my fault. I'm gonna roll it back. One more. All right. So. Rolling. And action. So we hear the music. We hear a lot about Prince One Ten. Everything's like that. We just want to know, right? Uh, why this is like uh. English damn. <laughs> 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 right? I my cousin for the time you were smoking. I was like, who knows? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I'm going to the second one. I'm going. To... Yeah, yeah. That's the second one. But I keep missing. I keep missing. I keep missing the second one. Doing the tail one. That's why they keep fucking up. All right. Silent on set. Rolling and action.
when you first started singing, how old, how old was you when you first started singing and writing your own music? Uh, shit, I started singing at...